hello and welcome to this fifth lecture of this module 4 and you know in this module we are discussing on this functions of random variable and uh, today we are uh, basically continuing from our last lecture where we have started with that uh, that um, uh, computation of expectation and moments directly for a, a particular function of this random variable without getting its uh, PDF or PMF uh, uh, explicitly. So, uh, we have discussed in the last class that uh, we will be uh, miss, uh, why this is useful because sometimes for some uh, transformation that uh, getting that uh, the explicit form of this PDF or PMF may not be that e e easy particularly for those uh, nonlinear fu function where the roots are more than one. So, in those cases if we can get the uh, estimation of these moments and uh, expectation then that will be uh, useful if we can get that uh, directly. So, our, uh, our point of discussion for from this last class as well as this class is uh, this issue and uh, so uh, what we are discussing in today's class that this expectation and moments of this functions and random variable this we will continuing from this uh, last class. So, you know, what we uh, discuss in the last class is that uh, this is just a quick uh, recapitulation that uh, there is that original uh, random variable is there and from uh, this random variable through some uh, functional correspondence with this random variable to, uh, uh, to, uh, to some, uh, some other the uh, function itself is another uh, random variable. So, this uh, random variable we can just call it to be the derived random variable and all. So, if we get this one in the uh, initial part of this uh, module we have uh, discussed how we can get the um, PDF and PMF and corresponding CDF as well from those um, derived random variables which are the functions of another random variable. And it is true that if we get that PDF uh, directly and after that we can get whatever the properties of that random variable we want. Uh, but here in this one we are discussing that how we can get this expectation moments and this moment generating functions as well directly from those uh, functional dependence. In the last class we mostly covered this expectation and this moments parts with uh, one problem. So, this class we will uh, start with uh, that some more uh, means discussion of those uh, problems and uh, mainly today we will focus on this moment generating function. So, you know this uh, that moment generating function what we are uh, looking for if we know that moment generating function of a particular random variable so then it is um, uh, it is derivative about uh, de 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 that it is derivative of a particular order and its value at a, at that origin will give you that moment of that order. So, once we know that moment generating function all the um, uh, mom, uh, that all the moments uh, all uh, the moments means uh, moment of all order is known to us. So, if we know this information that means it is equivalent to know everything of uh, all, all the properties of that particular random variable. So, uh, this we, we will uh, discuss today Ma mainly our uh, focus is that you now for a functional correspondence if we get one uh, moment generating uh, uh, moment generating function and if we see that that moment generating function has some has similarity with some of the known uh, uh, distribution then we can directly say that okay this distribution so the, the distribution of that particular random variable is following approximately or exactly to that uh, known uh, uh, that uh, distributional form so this we will be focusing in today's lecture and uh, when we are uh, talking about this moment generating function, uh, uh, before that we will see some more problems that we, uh, uh, that we uh, did not discuss in this last class on this moments of this random variable. So, quickly we will just uh, see uh, what we have seen in this in the, in, in the last class that we first discuss about the, um, the moments of the function of random variable in general where the x is one random variable and it is uh, that functional form is a g x which is equals to y. So, the y equals to g x is that functional form and uh, so, if we want to know what is the um, rth moment of that uh, function itself then we know that this will be the expectation and this moment when we are taking we are taking the moment with respect to the origin. 
Now, if this x is a discrete random variable, then we know and we discuss that uh, it should be the summation of that um, that particular value of that function power x multiplied by the uh, probability mass uh, concentrated at that uh, point, mm, uh, means uh, the probability mass for that particular outcome xi. So, in this way, if we just add up all such possible xi, that is all possible outcome, then we will get its expectation and that is the uh, in general form that is the rth moment of that uh, function gx. And uh, this is for the, con uh, this is for the uh, discrete one, uh, because we are taking this uh, summation and if we, uh, if the random variable is continuous, then also we have seen that it will be the integration uh, and integration of the, uh, of the function of pdf multiplied by the um, rth power of that uh, functional form and that integration should be done over the entire support of the random variable x. Here it is shown that minus infinity to plus in infinity. So, we will get that uh, moments, but these moments are with respect to the is, is about the origin. Now, you know that the uh, mostly from the second moment onwards, it is meaningful if we take it with respect to the mean. So, that is why now if we want to know that it is uh, for that uh, with respect to its mean, then that this, uh, so this function minus the expectation of that, uh, that, uh, that function, that is the, there is a mean of this one. So, that power r and if we take the rth moment of a discrete variable with uh, respect to its mean, then this is the general form that is g x i. Uh, minus expectation of uh, g x power r and uh, p x x i. Uh, so, this we uh, multiply and add it up for all this possible outcome x i and then we will get that this uh, this rth moment with respect to the origin. And this is for the discrete one. Similarly, for the uh, for the continuous random variable also the the functional form remains same but we have to do the integration over the entire support integration of gx minus expectation of gx power r multiplied by its pdf uh, so this integration is done uh, entirely over its support to get that rth moment of that function with respect to its mean now uh, so uh, um, this we have seen and we also know that the variance of a random variable here the variance of that function uh, which is also a random variable as well. So, variance of that one is nothing but the second moment with respect to the mean. So, uh, in place of the r if we just write that uh, 2 that is the second moment. So, second moment if we take then we will get the variance. So, in case of the uh, discrete random variable we have to do it for the all possible uh, outcome of this xi and we have to sum it up this product we have to sum up to get that variance of that function um, gx. Now, uh, similarly if this gx is for the continuous one, we have seen that the variance of this um, continuous function which is y equals to gx then this is also that um, second order moment with respect to its mean and mean is this expectation of that function g x. So, g x minus that expectation uh, it whole square multiplied by its pdf and taking this integration over the entire support, this will give you that variance. We have also discussed uh, um, the issue related to one uh, linear a linear function the common linear function here the uh, linear function that we uh, discuss is your uh, y equals to ax plus b this x is one uh, random variable and y is your that another random variable which is this which is related to x through this linear function where this a and b are the constant now if this is the uh, linear relationship then the expectation of this y can be expressed in terms of the expectation of the x that we have seen uh, last class that that expectation of y is equals to the expectation of its of its function and for this function the constant is uh, can be taken out that is expectation of this a x can be written that a multiplied by expectation of x and expectation of b b means this is a constant again so expectation of b will be equal to b so the um, expectation of y is equals to uh, 
a multiplied by expectation of x plus b. Similarly, if we see the variance of this y, then this variance of this uh, of a constant is equal to 0 uh, because this is constant. So, there is no question of any uh, variability. So, and the the constant if the constant is multiplied with the random variable when we take out that variance from the variance then it will be the square that also we have seen in the last class. So, the variance of y for this case for this linear uh, transformation the variance of this y is equals to the a square times the variance of x. So, if the random variable is multiplied by a scalar factor then its variance uh, of its multiplication should be the uh, should be the that square of that constant times the variance of the original random variable. So, this is the relationship for so this what is shown here is for the first two moments one is the mean and uh, the second one is for the uh, variance. So, at here we will take one problem and this problem is similar to that one what we took in the last class and we discuss about the uh, what is its uh, mean and that uh, so mean of this uh, of one uh, of one uh, random variable which is a function of another original random variable that we have uh, discussed in the last class and we have seen that without knowing the PDF of this one how we can use this relationship and we can get that uh, that mean directly. So, in this problem what we are discussing that how we can get the uh, variance directly. So, we will be showing the both the uh, methods here maybe we will show that how we can get it directly and also how we will get it from through this PDF then we will show that these two results are uh, same. So, here the we have taken one uh, that uh, discrete random variable example. So, this discrete random variable is x which uh, that PMF is shown as this uh, are uh, there are three possible outcome that x equals to minus 1, 0 and 1 and for all these three outcome the um, these are all equal uh, equiprobable. So, this PXX that is PMF is equals to one third for all such uh, cases. Now, so this so so everything about this random variable x is known. So, what we have to so what we have to find out that if the functional relationship is like this y is equal to x square then what is the variance of this uh, of this function uh, of this function y. So, uh, and now in in the uh, before I come to this how we have solved it he, uh, here what um, uh, we have seen that in the in the in the in the last class is that first of all this one uh, we uh, that for this y is equals to here that for this y is equals to um, y is equals to x square if you see it here on this paper that y equals to x square in this relationship that we are uh, talking uh, about. So, this x is equals to uh, one third for uh, for uh, for x sorry that p x x it, it is is equals to one third for this all this x that is minus 1, 0 and 1 and this functional relationship is this. So, from this fundamental also we have say, we have shown it in the last class that is that p y of this y is equals to is coming to be the two third for the sorry for y is equals to uh, 1 and equals to one third for y equals to 0. So, the possible outcome of this x are 3 that minus 1, 0 and 1 and following this relationship possible outcome for this y are only 2 that 0 and 1 and what um, we have seen that here the for this 1 there are the set that x it will take that is that r x that we discuss in uh, while discussing the fundamental theorem the possible set is both this minus 1 and plus 1. So, this is uh, more more probable that y equals to 1 and this is one third. Okay. Now, if we know this one now our, uh, our in the original uh, question what we are looking for what is the variance of this y. So, if we want to know that what is the variance of this y and we know that if I know this PDF then it will be 
equal to that. So, this possible outcome that is we know that y minus that uh, mean of that expectation of this y that is mu y or can write that mu y. So, this one square multiplied by that it is PMF that is you know, what is its probable and for all, all such x i if I just add up then I will get that uh, get that variance ok. Now, uh, so this y when we are taking about then this is the two the first outcome is 1. So, 1 m minus this mean is 2 third this square multiplied by this p x at here is your 2 third plus another outcome is your 0. So, 0 minus again this is your 2 third whole square multiplied by its p m f is 1 third. So, if we just do this one then it will comes as this one by three which is becoming that two by twenty seven plus four by twenty seven which is equals to six by twenty seven I can write it two by nine ok. So, I know this complete form of PMF for the function and then I am getting this variance. Now, if I want to know that one that directly for this function using this function relationship, then we know that I have to add that 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 functional form that is g x i minus that expectation of this random variable o y this square this multiplied by this p x of x i ok. So, directly I am using this functional relationship. Multi, uh, minus its means and I am just adding it up for this all x i. So, for this one I need to know this mean of this uh, random variable and in the last class we have discussed that how directly we can get that mean as well. That mean that in the last class you can refer to the last lecture that mean have from the directly from this uh, this function we, we have seen that it is that um, uh, mean is two third. So, using so here also we have seen that this mu y is your is your two third you can just multiply this and this then we will get that what is after this pdf and also from the functional relationship you can get that mean is two third. Now, from these functions evaluated at those outcome directly we can also get its variance and that is wh what is is explained here. So, here if you see that when we are taking that variance of this y, then this is a summation for this all x i g x minus x i minus their mean that square and multiplied by this, uh, this will be p you know that this is p m f. So, this p x a x i. So, this first outcome that x i that the original random variable we are referring to. So, this is minus 1. So, this minus 1 uh, uh, minus 1. So, this is the functional form is a square. So, g x is equal to x square. So, this minus 1 square minus 2 third this is the mean square this multiplied by what is the probability at x i equals to minus 1 which is 1 third. Second outcome is 0. So, 0 square that is the functional relationship minus 2 third square multiplied by its probability mass at this outcome is 1 third. Then the third outcome is 1 that 1 square minus 2 third power uh, this square multiplied by its probability at 1 which is 1 third again. So, if you just do this one you will also get that 2 by 9 which is the variance of this new uh, of this random variable y. So, this is we are getting from this direct from this functional relationship and what just what we uh, discussed what we have evaluated here is that after obtaining that uh, that what is there. Uh, PMF of this y. So, both we have seen here. So, next we will take another problem. This is uh, uh, basically if we know uh, this is basically the direct we are calculating the uh, variance of a of a random variable. So, you know that when we are talking about that we are calculating the variance of a random variable there what we can say that the function itself is that is the random variable. So, if that if that g x itself is the x then what we will get we will get the uh, uh, get the uh, get the properties of that random variable. So, here we have taken one problem from Kotegora and Ro uh, Rosso 2008. 
So uh, there we will we have given one uh, PMF and for that I have to find out the variance. So problem states consider a simple case where the variable can take only a value only two values that is 0 or 1. This situation can represent the occurrence of a flood at a particular site on a river uh, where the event 1 is the exceedance of a specific flow flow level in that uh, river and so if it exceeds then it is 1 and if it does not exceed then it is 0. So let the probability of such occurrence be p. So again if you just see it from the uh, from the cons uh, concept of the Bernoulli's uh, distribution that we discussed in the last module. So here if I just arbitrarily say that uh, when the random variable taking the value 1 it is a success. So the probability of the success here is p. Now, the event 0 is the complementary event that means when it is not 1, so when it is not exceeding that flow level and has a probability obviously this probability of occurrence will be the total probability that is 1 minus that p. The uh, probabilities of two such events are given by this Bernoulli distribution and this Bernoulli distribution here the PMF is on the probability of x equals to xi is that probability p power uh, xi multiplied by 1 minus p power 1 minus xi. Obviously, that factor here is that there are two situations how you can select one that is 2 c 1 and 2 choose 1 is equals to 1. So, that is why the multiplication factor is 1. So, this is one PMF that is shown uh, and the outcome that is the xi value can take only two possibilities one, one is 0 and another is 1. So, we have to find out what is the variance of this uh, function. Now, as we were discussing that this when we are directly looking for this uh, variance itself that means that function itself is that random variable and we will see now how we can uh, get this one from this uh, relationship that, we, uh, that what, uh, what we have discussed just now is this that if we take the uh, second moment about the uh, origin then uh, from that uh, variance of this x is equals to that uh, expectation of this x minus mu x uh, square uh, variance of x is equals to expectation of this x minus mu x whole square. So, this is the second moment that we are taking with respect to the mean and so uh, as this is the uh, discrete variable. So, x i minus uh, mu this is whole square that multiplied by p x x. Now, uh, um, there are so I can use this relationship I can also solve with whatever that outcome is here and uh, from here we can directly solve uh, this uh, this particular problem. So, this one what we will see here now first before I come to this what is the technique is shown he here. So, what we have seen here if we just see it here on this paper that uh, that expectation of so, um, first of all that uh, uh, variance of this x which is as I told that it is the expectation of that uh, x minus uh, mu x that square if I take this one then this is uh, this is the uh, this is the variance. So, which is again that uh, for this discrete random variable this is that x i minus mu x this square multiplied by this probability mass uh, function at that x i and in this, this way all such x i if I just add up I will get. So, first of all what we have to get we have to get this mu x, mu x again we know that this is the expectation of this x and which is equals to for this discrete random variable this is that i is equal i for that uh, for all, all such i. So, a 0 and 1, 1. So, if I take this one then this is x i probability uh, um, mass function at this point if I just add it then this is the first one is this 0 probability is uh, uh, 1 minus p plus another outcome is that 1 and its probability is p. So, its mean is equals to p. Now, the using this one if I just take this one then variance of this x is equals to that summation of x i minus mu whole square multiplied by this p x x i 
i for all i <coughs> for all x i which is equals to the first one is the outcome is 0 uh, minus this mean p which is uh, square multiplied by for this 0 outcome this probability is 1 minus p this one plus this one again that out uh, x i can now take 1 minus this mean is p whole square this one multiplied by its uh, probability is p now if i do this one then it is p square multiplied by 1 minus p plus 1 minus p square multiplied by p which is equals to p square minus p cube plus p minus 2 p square plus this p cube equals to that p minus minus p square that is what we get here. Now, if we are talking about that if if we are if what the other way of this the same uh, problem if i just take that is that variance of this x can also be uh, can also be represented at that expectation of this x square minus uh, that expectation of x whole square this we have seen in the in earlier lectures as well. So, so from this re re relationship, if I just want to know now this expectation of x, we have already got this is your p. Now, if we see that what is your expectation of x square, then if I get this value, then we will we'll also get that what is the variance of this x and which is solved it he here in this uh, procedure is that this expectation of so here on the screen, if you see that this expectation of x square is if I take that again that all this outcome square and their uh, then their probability mass if we just add up for these two such outcome then this also comes as p. So, this variance now is equals to the expectation of x square minus x, uh, x square. So, now so this is your p minus this is your p square. So, that uh, so the variance here also it comes that p minus p square which is here it is shown that variance of x is equals to p minus uh, p square. One, oh, one special case is shown here if the p is equals to 0 0.1 then uh, the variance just we put these values we will get that um, uh, variance will be equals to 0 0.09 that is uh, 9 percent. So, uh, so we have seen that so using this uh, relationship and as well as from that uh, basic one we have shown that this, uh, this relationship is coming to be. Uh, to, to, to be same. Uh, in the last class, we have also seen that if uh, sometime when uh, this functional relationship is uh, not linear, we have uh, seen that this Taylor series expansion about uh, of that function about that po point very briefly. Here also again we have just put uh, this one and this will be as I, uh, as, uh, as, as I mentioned that this will be mostly useful in case of when we are uh, um, talking about a non-linear uh, function. So, when we are talking about a non-linear uh, uh, function then if we just uh, see this one this may be sometime very useful to us and that is why this uh, Taylor series expansion is just uh, discussed uh, very briefly. So, this is uh, states that that uh, here that about that mean that is the uh, mu x if I just uh, describe that uh, if, if, if I do that Taylor series ex expansion of that uh, function g x then it comes to be this one. So, y equals to uh, uh, g of mu x plus x minus mu x multiplied by that uh, by the derivative the first derivative of that uh, function about x uh, about x and this is this should be evaluated at this um, at this point itself. So, plus that a half of uh, this x minus mu x square multiplied by the second derivative of uh, this one plus obviously the higher order uh, things also will come here. Now, it says that if we just so if we 
ignore this nonlinear part if we just cut it here at this at this linear terms e itself then the series if the series is truncated at the linear terms then the first order approximate mean and the variance of this y can be obtained as the expectation of y is equals to so this is now a constant because we have already get, got the value at some point so this is a constant so so it is approximately is equal to this constant okay because this x minus mu when we are taking this expectation obviously this will become zero so basically we are considering this function up to this the up to this linear term and this while taking the expectation is becoming zero and we are just uh, getting uh, that this uh, expectation of y is is approximately equal to the value of the function at mu x now if the functional relationship is linear then we have seen in the last class that this will be exactly equal to this uh, to this uh, value but even when it is taking that nonlinear form this will be this can be said that this is approximately equal to similarly for the um, uh, variance of this o o y this also can be shown that this this is now uh, is this variance of x minus mu x multiplied by that uh, first derivative square so this first de derivative evaluated at mean that is basically a constant so that constant when we are taking out of this variance we have seen that that should be square so that is why why this uh, this uh, this value is getting square multiplied by with this with this variance now inside this one so variance of x minus mu x now mu x again is the constant for whose that variance is zero so this is basically the variance of x multiplied by this first derivative of that function uh, with respect to x evaluated at min that square so this should be multiplied with this variance of x to get that variance of y so this is what we are ge uh, getting as a as an approximation from this uh, uh, um, that uh, taylor series expansion so if the function gx is approximately li uh, linear for the entire range of the value x then the above two equation will yield good approximation of this exact uh, moment and this we will see through a problem and that is why we have just briefly mentioned about this uh, theory ag again so here we are uh, the problem is taken on this maximum impact pressure and this maximum this problem is taken from uh, ang and tang and uh, it's 1975 that book so this is the relationship between this maximum impact pressure and its relationship with other parameters like that density of water uh, length of hypothetical uh, piston thickness of the air cushion and uh, horizontal velocity of this advancing wave so this is based on that this air cushion uh, model and sometimes it is used for this to calculate the uh, impact of that uh, c wave on a on, on a structure that structure may be vertical or inclined so here this uh, this relationship is given that what should be the uh, what should be the maximum uh, impact pressure so this relationship says like this that p max is equals to 2.7 rho k u square uh, by d now these are uh, these are uh, expressed in that uh, that um, fps unit so we have unit, we have taken those uh, those uh, some one example with that fps unit itself so if uh, if that the mean crest velocity so mean crest velocity at a uh, particular point if we say that it is 5.5 feet per second uh, with a coefficient of variation you know that coefficient of variation is the ratio of that uh, standard deviation and mean so that coefficient of variation is uh, that 25 percent so that means that standard deviation divided by mean is equals to 0.25 and the density of the sea water is about 1.966 slugs per uh, cubic feet and the ratio of k by d is equals to 20. we have to determine the mean and standard deviation of the peak impact pressure so uh, now you see we even uh, have not uh, uh, not given about anything about this uh, uh, the property of this u we have just got a mean uh, uh, mean of this particular value 
and what we are and this relationship is again you can see the nonlinear because the u is square is given a, a here. So what we what we are supposed to know is its mean and standard deviation of this of this peak impact. And what is what is supplied to us is that mean of that velocity and the standard deviation of that uh, max of that crest velocity, because standard deviation is supplied through this coefficient of variation. Now, so so this is this one. So if we want to know, so we know that for a function expectation of this y, that is the mean we can calculate. This is that approximately can be equated to that value of that functional relationship evaluated at this mu x. So, expectation of the P max that is the maximum impact pressure is equals to that 2.7 that is the constant that is multiplied in that equation that multiplied by this rho, uh, rho means the density of the seawater which is supplied as 1.96 uh, slug per cubic feet that multiplied by that k by d ratio is 20 and that uh, u is the mean u that is mean uh, crest velocity is 5.5 uh, square. So, if we do this one we see that uh, 22.23 uh, psi is the uh, maximum impact pressure uh, uh, that mean of the maximum impact pressure that uh, that uh, coastal structure can experience. So, uh, now uh, if we calculate that uh, variance now variance of that uh, uh, maximum impact uh, pressure. So, we have seen from this uh, Taylor series expansion and its approximation that variance of y is related to the variance of the x multiplied by the uh, square of its first de derivative evaluated at its uh, that mean. So, uh, if we take this one then variance of this, this is p max not the rho max, this is p max, the variance of this p max is approximately equal to this variance of this u that is that original thing multiplied by uh, that uh, that derivative. Now, this derivative is again the 2.75 rho k by d square multiplied by 2 u square. So, uh, this one this mean velocity now we have to put, uh, put here that is that 5.5 this what we have put and this variance of u is again that the we get it from the that information of the coefficient of variation. So, the coefficient of variation multiplied by this mean 5.5 this will give you the standard de deviation of that u that square will give you the variance of that um, uh, that variance. So, standard deviation square is gives the uh, variance of this u. So, using this variance and using this derivative form evaluated at this mean will give you this all this full information. So, this the standard deviation of that maximum impact pressure is equals to after doing this uh, uh, calculation 11.12 uh, psi. So, uh, we have seen that from this approximation how we can get some information of this uh, the first two moments of this uh, function of a random variable here the function is that p max and this original random variable is your u. Now, uh, we are so, so far what we have discussed is this moments and moments are generally up to that uh, second moment mostly that our point of discussion is. Now, if we just take that if we want to make it more generalized that is if we if we want to know what is the moment generating function then using that moment generating function you know that if we calculate if we obtain its derivative any order or uh, derivative of any order first order second order third order. So, in that accordingly we will get that that particular mom, uh, moment if we evaluate it at that uh, uh, at that uh, particular point. So, so, so we have to first of all know that what is the moment generating function for this derived uh, random variable. So, uh, as we have uh, told at the beginning that the random variable that is the function of the other uh, random variables and its probability distributions are also known as this derived variable and derived distribution. The determination of the probability distribution of a derived variable from those of the basic variables is not and uh, sometimes it is not the easy task, but we have shown it from the fundamental theorem how to do how to uh, uh, obtain this one. So, here if we just get what we are our point of focus here is now we will get that directly that moment generating uh, fun function and that will give us some useful information about the variable in question. 
so uh, so for this moment generating uh, function this is uh, discussed in the previous lecture that is the moment generating function of a, a random variable x is defined as the expectation of that exponential of the xt so if we take the uh, that expectation of this uh, of this function now how to get the expectation of a particular function that we have uh, we, we know so if you if we we get the expectation of this particular function that is that x is here is the random variable the e power xt then this is giving you that moment generating uh, function then if the moment generating function exists with this condition that moment generating function exists then its mth derivative at origin is the mth order central moment of x so this is very important so what should we do with this moment generating function so what we will do is that that the with this moment generating function will take that derivative of some order mth order in general and if we evaluate that derivative form at the origin then the central moment uh, should be uh, that uh, so at uh, at that point if we evaluate at the origin then that will give you that uh, central mo uh, so moment of that random variable x. Now uh, some notes on this uh, moment generating function is that the uh, basic concept is, is that if the two random variables have the identical moment generating function then they possess the same probability distribution. In the others, other way also we can say that the random variable which are having the same probability distribution obviously should have the same moment generating function. Now if we get if we have some two random variables and we see that their moment generating functions are same then obviously it is it is quite straightforward that this uh, uh, that their probability distributions are identical. Now the procedure is to find out the moment generating function and then uh, compare it to all known uh, ones to see that if there is a match. So for a particular random variable if we just take that uh, moment generating function and then uh, we compare it to all known ones and see if there is a match. So this is one, one usefulness is that if we if we have a random variable and we calculate that what is this uh, its moment generating function and that moment generating function if we see that yes it is it is it is a known moment generating function and that we have seen it for this uh, this standard distribution this normal distribution or for this uh, gamma de 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 distribution then what we can say that that the random variable that we have analyzing is following that particular distribution sometime it is also again uh, also help to know that if we have some functional relationship and then we are uh, calculating the derived random variable what is its moment generating function and that moment generating function we have we got some similarity with some other known distribution then we can conclude that after taking this function then the derived random variable is following this distribution one such example to is so uh, that depending on that uh, for uh, from a standard normal distribution to a normal distribution how uh, the uh, how the moment generating function through this moment generating function we come to know that this is also this is also a uh, normal distribution that we will see and the most commonly done uh, the most commonly uh, uh, it is done to see that if a distribution approaches to the normal distribution as the sample size goes to infinity this is another uh, application this is generally done that when the sample size goes to inf infinity sometimes some distribution we can say that this can be approximated uh, to some uh, to some normal distribution So here the theorem uh, says, so the theorem states that this let this fx x and the fy y be two cumulative distribution function all of whose moments exist then if x and y have bounded support then fx u and fy u are equal for all u if and only if their moment their rth order moment with respect to origin for both the random uh, random variables are equal for all integers that means for the all the mo mo moments so expectation of this x power r and expectation of the y power r are equal for all this r means r are obviously integer here that is that uh, zero at mo uh, moment first order moment second order moment all this expectation if they are same 
then this their cumulative distribution f x u and f y u are equal. Second, if the moment generating function exists and that moment generating function m x t and m y t are equal for all such t. So, this is the moment generating function for the x and this, this is the moment generating uh, function for y. Then if these two are same for all t in some neighborhood of 0, then uh, f x u is equals to f y u that is the uh, that uh, cumulative distribution of this x and y is for all, all, all u these are equal. So, here we are saying that if the x is the uh, discrete uh, random variable, so how to get that moment generating function both for this discrete as for the continuous random variable and that z is the function of that uh, random variable x, then this x is a random variable taking the integer values, then its moment generating function is by definition this mz t is equals to expectation of z power x which is equals to summation of all such n that is n equals to minus infinity to plus infinity and uh, is equals to probability of x equals to n. So, for those uh, specific outcome because this is a discrete random variable multiplied by z power n. So, this summation is gives you the moment generating uh, function for uh, this random variable z. And for the if we take the continuous random variable then this moment generating function is equals to the expectation of e power t z this is a function and this z equals to your g x if this is the functional form then the integration uh, of this e power uh, t multiplied by g x multiplied by their pdf f x x d x and this integration is taken over the entire support will give you the moment generating fu uh, function of that of that function g x that is z here. And what we have also seen that if we take that uh, derivative, then derivative generally takes the forms uh, like this. That is, uh, the general derivative form we have to we have we have to update. That is, if I take the k times that difference, if I differentiate these moments in uh, k times, then m k z is equals to expectation of this x multiplied by x minus one multiplied by x minus two up to that x minus k minus 1 that is x minus k plus 1 this multiplied by z power x minus k. So, this full term if we take that uh, expectation. So, this is basically that kth order derivative of that moment generating function. There are some uh, facts for some linear function and for some uh, additive uh, function if we know then this is generally very useful when we are dealing with this moment generating function. Then if there are two random variable here one is that related to this linear fu um, function linear, uh, linear relationship that z is equals to a y plus b then the moment generating function of that z is equals to we know that expectation of e power t z. Now, this z can be replaced by this your this a y t a y t multiply uh, plus b t. So, a y plus b multiplied by t. So, this expectation. Now, this e power b t. So, this is a constant. So, if this is a constant we know that this we can take out. So, e power b t multiplied by expectation of e power y a t. Now, this y a t when we are talking about. Now, this is a this is a uh, this is again we can say that this is the moment generating function of the of the where the variable is that a t because this is a, this is the general form of this moment generating fu function. So, e power b t multiplied by m y. So, this is the moment generating function for y multiplied by a t. So, if I just compare with this uh, linear relationship and this relationship of this moment generating function then so, if the constant, if there is any constant, that constant is is now here is multiplied in the form of that e power b t. So, e power t is there, whatever the constant is here that is multiplied and this is multiplied with that moment generating function of that whatever the constant is here that a, that a t of that random variable, original random variable y. So, this is the uh, relationship between this moment generating function of this uh, um, uh, between two random variable which are related to uh, related through a uh, linear uh, relationship. Another one 
is that if there are uh, n numbers of independent random variable here it is y1 y2 up to yn and a function we are uh, talking about is the summation of all such independent random variable that is z is equals to y1 plus y2 plus up to this up to yn then that uh, that moment generating function of this z is equals to e power uh, tz which is now z is replaced by this y1 plus y2 plus up to yn so these are the now the uh, moment generating fu fu function we can just uh, write in their multiplicative form and this can be replaced by this expectation of this individual random variable we can write this one because they are independent to each other so now each entity is now the moment generating function for that random variable so this re uh, results that multiplication of the moment generating function of all such n original random uh, random variables so if we know that there are um, uh, there are n numbers of random variable which are obviously independent then the multiplication of their moment generating uh, function will give you the the moment generating function of that uh, new random variable z which is obtained through the the addition of this uh, uh, these functions so we'll take one example here that this is a uh, normal distribution with 0 and 1 uh, where the and the functional relationship here is the uh, linear relationship mu plus zy we know that uh, this is uh, if this is a standard normal distribution by this discussion in our last module that this y will follow a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma now we'll see it through this moment generating function for this normal standard normal distribution the moment generating function is exponential of half uh, t square now if we take this myt and using that relationship this comes as expectation of mu t plus half sigma square t square now this one we know that this one is the moment generating function of the of a normal distribution which is having the uh, uh, mean mu and sigma square thus y has a normal distribution with mean uh, so that mu and variance sigma square. We will take one problem from Cotegola and uh, Rosso. It states that the impact pressure of the C waves on a coastal structure, the same expression we have taken, but all this constant here now is uh, club with uh, a new constant C. So, Z is equals to x square. Now, what is given here, supplied here is that uh, this x is following a, a normal distribution which is the uh, given like this and we have to know what are the uh, properties of this z. So, if I want to do it from this moment generating function, then uh, we are just, we are stating another new um, uh, random variable x minus mu x by sigma x and obviously this is that with 0 mean and unit standard deviation and its pdf is equals to 1 by square root 2 pi e power 0.5 y square. Now, this z is equals to c x square c multiplied by this function. So, this is if we just expand this one, we will get this c mu square plus 2 c mu x sigma x y plus c sigma square x y square. Representing the y is equals uh, w is equals to y square and by substituting that f y uh, in this moment generating fun uh, function, we will get that m z of this t is equals to this fu uh, function, this functional relation. So, this one we have seen from this uh, general thing. Now, if we fit this one for this our this case, then this that f y we are just replacing with this standard normal distribution. Now, if we just do this integration and if we use this transformation that z equals to y square root 1 minus 2t, then we can show after some algebraic calculation this that this is 1 by square root of 1 minus 2t. So, uh, so now if I just want to know that it is different moments, then this mu t we know that we have to do the first derivative and evaluate at t equals to 0 and which if we do we will get that this is equals to 1 and this obviously w square we also uh, from taking the second derivative and evaluate at 0 this will be equals to 1 and so the coefficient of variance again the expectation of uh, w square minus this expectation of y whole square so 3 minus 1 this is equals to 2 and so if i just see that mean of this required impact pressure then this is becoming from this equation c equals to this and sigma z square is equals to this equation and from these two if we just 
uh, evaluate after some algebraic uh, uh, that calculation that is CV the coefficient of variation equals to standard deviation by mu then we see that this mean is augmented by a factor 1 plus CV square and this variance is augmented by a factor that 2 into 1 plus 2 by CV square. So, uh, these things we can see from uh, from their the basic relationship and that uh, moments those that uh, the first moment and variance here we have seen with this also we can take it from the general expression of this moment generating uh, function and their derivative that their respective derivative and evaluated at a particular uh, point that is that origin. So, uh, we have uh, discussed here how this moment generating function can be useful to get the properties of this function of this random variable. So, this is basically the conclusion of this full uh, functions of random variable and in this module we have discussed about only a single random variable, multiple random variable will be taken in the next module. Thank you.